Welcome to this video on SMC and fiberglass repair. We'll be repairing the Freightliner hood that you can see here. This hood is made of SMC which is very similar to fiberglass and uses very similar procedures for the repair of both materials. We'll discuss the differences throughout the video. We'll also discuss briefly how to replace these components. There are more similarities than differences between SMC and fiberglass. They are both based on polyester resin technology and use glass fibers as a reinforcement to add strength. The biggest difference with SMC is that SMC is smooth on both the inside and the outside as it has a polyethylene film, which allows it to be molded and then heat set into the form. If you have a look at the image above, you can see a feathered edge on SMC where we have the paint, the primer, the polyethylene film, which looks very close to the base material of the resin and the fibers. SMC, which stands for sheet molded compound or sheet molded composite, requires a slightly different resin than fiberglass for repairs. That is due to the differences in the resin, including those mold release agents. Because of that, fiberglass and SMC both use a polyester resin, but these resins use little different technology. One of the notable differences we can see here is the hardener that's used for them. Fiberglass resin uses the liquid methyl ethyl ketone peroxide or MEK peroxide hardener, while of course the uh, SMC resin uses the benzyl peroxide. Now if you look at this can of SMC, it says SMC fiberglass. That is because SMC resin with the benzyl peroxide can be used on both SMC and fiberglass panels. However, fiberglass resin can only be used on fiberglass and it will not stick very well to SMC panels because of the mold release agents. Let's dive right into the repair. The first step is always a hot soap and water wash, which has already been completed. Then we follow up with using a solvent-based cleaner. We know that solvent-based cleaning can be dangerous when we're rubbing panels that are made of composite materials due to the buildup of static electricity, which could cause a flash fire. So we are using an alcohol-based cleaner, which is approved as a safe cleaner for this type of material. You'll notice that I've sprayed the surrounding area and have wiped it clean. However, for the direct damage, I'm spraying my towel and then dabbing the area. The reason being is I do not want the fibers in that damage to wick up any of the cleaner. This is also true for the cleaning with water. Water especially will be wicked up into those fibers and it will be held in there, which could cause the fibers to rot out at a later point. I've proceeded to the inside of this panel with the same cleaner and cleaning process that I used on the outside. This also allows me an opportunity to start assessing the damage. I can see that the damage goes all the way through the panel and into that inner structure. This makes this a double-sided structural repair, which also adds to the complexity with that inner brace being damaged as well. While we're looking at the inside, we can also see that everything is smooth. So the inside of this panel is smooth, which is an indication that this is indeed SMC rather than fiberglass. Most fiberglass panels will have the appearance of the fibers on the inside. I'm not a believer in all the hearsay that fiberglass is itchy. Yes, it can be a little bit itchy, but it's not as bad as some people make it out to be. However, I'm still wearing proper PPE and taping my arms to prevent dust from going up my sleeves. Preventing blowing of the fiberglass, and even in some cases putting talcum powder or baby powder on your skin beforehand can prevent the dust from getting into your pores. So I'm starting the repair here with an air saw as I need to remove this inner panel. So I've decided on some cutting locations here and I'm carefully cutting this inner brace without causing damage to anything else inside of this panel. Once I've made my cuts, I'll have to use some heat to start separating the adhesive that is holding this inner panel on. In most cases, you're not going to take the inner panel out. You would actually take the outer panel off and replace the outer panel, but the steps are very similar. It's not very common that you would take a piece of the inner panel like this, cut it out uh, to allow access, repair the outer, and then reinstall the panel. But we will show you that for demonstration purposes. We're also going to show you some other things in this video simply for demonstration purposes that you may not necessarily do on your repairs. Fiberglass cuts very similar to wood, which is why I'm using the reciprocating saw rather than a cutoff wheel. You could use a cutoff wheel, but it's not nearly as effective. A coarse blade can be much better than a finer blade that's for steel. Other reciprocating blades or a hacksaw can work really well for cutting fiberglass too. 
In fact, when you have to throw fiberglass out, for example, if one of these hoods were to be thrown away, one of the quickest ways to cut it up to fit in your dumpster is to take a chainsaw and use the chainsaw to cut the entire hood, provided you're watching out for any metal reinforcements. With all of the cuts complete, I can now heat the remaining seams to release the adhesive that is holding this panel in place. Normally on these hoods, if you're replacing a section, it's an outer section, so you'd actually be heating the outer section to release it from the inner. Since this is a piece that I want to save, I will use a heat gun, a safe source of heat that is, to warm the panel so that the adhesive will release. I'm being very careful not to heat the part of the panel that is remaining intact, or I could in fact release adhesive that it's not going to be replaced. As I'm using the heat gun, it's doing a great job releasing this adhesive, and with a gentle prying method, I can get the panel up. If the panel is not coming, do not pry hard, or you will crack and damage the fiberglass or SMC part. If you are replacing the part, you can put more heat into the panel. However, you have to be very careful. So let's say, for example, I were replacing this, I could indeed use a torch. Here I'm using a propane torch, but of course, an oxyacetylene torch can work as well. As we start heating this panel, you're going to see the paint start to discolor, noting that, of course, there's heat going into that panel. As we start heating this, if we're not careful, we can start to damage the part that we're going to keep, which would be, in this case, the outer panel. And we're also going to start burning any remaining fibers that have whipped up or stood up from the damage. As we're heating, that is going to release the adhesive, the glue, and it does work much quicker than the heat gun, but of course the likelihood of damage is that much more. Don't ever use an open flame unless you're prepared, of course, if a fire were to start, and do not use an open flame on a panel you're keeping. We will be reinstalling this panel for the purpose of demonstrations uh, in this video. However, keep that in mind, as I've mentioned, do not use an open flame if you are saving the part. As we complete the heating, the panel should come off with relative ease. If you've not heated the panel enough and you try pulling or chiseling too hard, you will indeed crack the fiberglass or SMC panel as we can see here in this corner. That is an example of what you do not want to do. So I'm demonstrating here some poor practice. If you pull hard enough, it will damage and come off. Rather, go back with more heat and gently remove it. Once the panel is removed, let's look at how well this seam came apart. We can see where the glue let go on one section and on another section where it actually tore the fiberglass. Some of the reason the fiberglass may tear out is due to the damage that's on the other side, or the fiberglass may have come out or torn due to improper heat usage or uh, too much effort or force exerted with a chisel. Once the panel's removed, we're going to start grinding uh, to allow tooth for our repair later on. So here I'm grinding to remove any of the old fibers. Vacuuming will do a better job to keep dust down rather than blowing. If blowing, blow into the vacuum. The direct damage has been beveled or coved out. The area around the direct damage has also been ground to allow for good coarse tooth for proper adhesion of the repair material. And then we back sanded with 80 grit. I'm chiseling this one side which has not been properly ground unlike the other side of the direct damage, showing all these layers that are separated and if we were to repair over this, the repair would eventually fail. Note this old aluminum paint stick that I've bent towards the contour of the panel. That is to help hold the panel in position while the resin cures. I'll eventually put resin and glass on here and during that curing process we do not want this panel to move out of position. A paint stick is easy to bend into position, provided it's an old paint stick you no longer need. And the key here is that it's aluminum. Aluminum is a great uh, material to use when working with resin because the resin will not stick to the aluminum, unlike wood, uh, steel, masking tape, or other materials, which would be very hard to remove afterwards. So I bent the aluminum uh, paint stick into place, and I'm using vice grips to hold it. Afterwards, I will supplement this with aluminum tape for the same reason it will not stick to the cured resin. It will come off easily. Uh, in addition to that, the aluminum tape supports the panel but also prevents the resin from squeezing out any areas. The liquid resin will run anywhere that it possibly can. Therefore, I'm taping up any holes, cracks, or crevices where it could run out and make a big mess. I'll eventually dam the bottom of the repair since this is angled, and I will put some aluminum tape over my vice grip to prevent the vice grip from possibly sticking to any resin that drips onto it. 
You could use rivets or other means of holding the panel in place, then remove the rivets and replace the holes from the rivets with some more resin afterwards. As we have a look at the other side, we can see that the uh, panel is held in place here, but we have this old cracked area that wasn't ground, that's no good. The fiberglass reinforcement material will come in either a cloth or matte form. Matte is typically used for repairs, whereas cloth may be used to lay out new panels. That's not always the case in manufacturing, but for the case of what we're doing in the collision shop, that's usually the norm. This repair is going to be using matte. Notice the straight edge that was cut. I'm actually going to take the fibers and pull them out, which makes for a stronger patch than a straight cut edge. Avoid cutting edges if possible. Having those exposed fibers, uh, when you start laying up several layers, creates for a much stronger bond. If you have a straight cut edge, that creates a weak point in the repair area. So what I'm doing is preparing several layers of fiberglass mat so that I have them prepped in size for when I start applying my resin since I have limited time to apply the resin. I'm making sure that each of my pieces is slightly different in size and I'm going to offset them. You can start off with small pieces and start with small pieces in the direct repair and work up larger. Uh, because this repair is a little bit bigger, I'm actually using different sizes and shapes and will be staggering where I'm positioning them and how I position them over top of each other. That again is to create the strongest repair. I always say it's kind of like a brick wall. When you see a strong brick wall, they always stagger the bricks. They don't uh, line all the bricks in a straight line since that would create a weak joint. I'm pouring the SMC resin into a graduated container which has the line showing me how much material I poured in there. That will help me determine how much hardener to add. Being SMC resin, this uses the benzyl peroxide cream hardener. As with any cream hardener, we should always knead before use. You'll notice that this particular cream hardener is white. Of course, as with any cream hardener, the color doesn't mean anything. Uh, ideally, the color should only be used to help ensure that the product is mixed. So you could certainly use blue or red hardener if that's what came with your resin. Apply the appropriate amount of resin as per the container. And once the appropriate amount of resin is applied in there, then we want to stir thoroughly. This is not an area where you want to be cheap with stirring. Make sure that's stirred thoroughly or you could wind up with a part of your resin in the repair later that doesn't properly cure. Or if there's too much resin, it will cure too hard and become extremely brittle, making for a weak uh, and dangerous repair. And there's the thoroughly mixed resin being applied to the panel with a paintbrush. You do want to work fairly quick though, because of course there is limited time for that resin uh, as we've added hardener to it, and the time will be more limited on a hot day. Do note though, I am working quickly, but if you watch the video, uh, I am actually going very fast, and that's because I sped the video up to twice the normal speed. So although you're, you have to work quick, you don't need to work quite as quick as what you're seeing here. So I want to make sure that I apply resin to everywhere that's been ground. Everywhere that's been ground needs that primer coat of resin. And what that does is it helps give us a good base for our mat, which we're applying here. And on top of that, it also makes sure that all of the exposed fibers are completely covered in resin so they don't look up anything in the future. Place down your first piece of mat uh, and then your next piece of mat, making sure to overlap it somewhere and stagger them. And if you notice when I'm applying the resin with the paintbrush, I'm dabbing, not brushing. The reason I'm dabbing is dabbing forces air out, whereas if I uh, start brushing, I can not only move the mat, but I can also move air into it. If you do have air, then you can start pushing the air out towards the edge. As I'm applying the resin, don't be too cheap. Of course, we don't want the resin to pool up in here, but we want to make sure that we thoroughly saturate each and every layer of mat, making sure that we get resin over the entire thing, especially the edges of those fibers. We don't want to miss anything. And then again, start layering in here. Lots of layers. How many layers is the correct amount? I don't have an answer for that. It depends on the repair. You want to make sure that you have enough layers of mat that you're at least equal to or higher than the original height of the panel. So however many layers that winds up being. I find that at bare minimum, it's usually at least three layers of mat, but could be upwards of five, six, or seven. And back to normal speed after several other layers have been applied. Continue applying resin as needed, and if you see any air pockets, they'll appear as light colors like right here. Dab those areas until the light color goes away, and if you need to, push it towards an edge to get it out. Make sure that you go over checking for air pockets or low spots. If there's low spots, apply another layer. 
You can go to the edge as I'm doing here and apply some extra resin. That will cure and allow uh, us to easily cut off the excessive material afterwards. Make sure you check for any loose pieces of cloth or mat and make sure that all those fibers are completely covered in resin. This is cured resin, as noted by the dull appearance, it's no longer shiny, and the darkening, which is very typical of the cured resin. What we don't want to see for color is a yellow or brown appearance, which could indicate some burning of the resin. That can happen when too much hardener has been used and or too much heat applied. You can use heat to help cure the resin, uh, which certainly speeds up the process, but that must be gentle heat. Another thing to note on the inside of this repair is if you were to finish it for cosmetic appearance on the inside, we could grind, sand, and then apply any necessary body fillers, primers, and paints to get that smooth finish it originally had. So speaking of adding too much hardener, uh, let me try right here. Here I'm adding too much hardener to this sample of resin and stirring quite well. And once I add uh, this excessive amount of hardener, well, holy smoke, that's right. The exothermic reaction created by the excess heat from the excessive amount of hardener has caused this to burn. Look at it boiling, you can even hear it there. So that excessive heat caused this to boil, burn, smoke. And as we have a look at them cured, we can see, well, that yellow-brown color, and it's also chunked up. That would be a bad repair. Yes, I've hit the fast-forward button once again. I can see the air saws cutting the excess material off the edge. That's why I applied that extra resin earlier. Makes it really easy to remove that and get a nice, sharp, clean edge. So I fast-forwarded this because, of course, I'm grinding. Uh, you guys get the point here. I want to make sure that I grind as necessary to clean up the area. Uh, and then, of course, I had that dam I was talking about to prevent that resin from sliding all the way down the panel. I'm going to clean that edge up from that dam just with some grinding. And uh, then I'm going to go around and start prepping and grinding the area where I'll eventually have to replace that inner patch. So remember, we took that inner piece out so I could access both sides of this repair. So using the grinder, the angle grinder, die grinder, going in as necessary. There was a hole here for a marker light, so I'm using this die grinder to reopen the hole. And eventually I'll grab a drill and drill out the holes for the mounting bolts or screws that would go in uh, to this part. Make sure that when you're grinding, you don't remove too much material. It's only grinding for the sake of the cosmetic aspect of the repair. We want to make sure that we grind as needed without taking too much off. The resin's very strong and it's stronger than any filler we'll put on later, so don't take too much material off, please. And back to normal speed. The hood has been flipped over, so we're looking at the front side now, removing the aluminum tape and that paint stick that was used to reinforce the panel during the backside repair. Uh, they came off quite easily, and that's because, of course, they're aluminum. The dark that you see there, that is the resin. We want to make sure that the resin came as far through that as possible, which makes uh, for a strong repair. If the resin didn't come through far enough, that's okay. We can complete the repair on the front side. We want to make sure that we bevel and coat the repair in the direct damaged areas. Then, of course, grind back from that and then do some back sanding with 80 grit. So I want to make sure that this is ground quite well, exposing everything as needed. And what does that look like? Well, uh, that's the completed grinding. Notice all the exposed resin, which means we'll access it from both sides. If the backside repair wasn't as successful as you hoped, you can always reapply some more resin on the front side, either resin alone, or you can apply some resin with some more matte or cloth as needed. But ours wasn't necessary for that, so I just went straight to fiberglass reinforced filler, and then of course blocked the filler out as needed here. We can see a little bit of the resin in that one side, it's not too high, so this is ready for the application of some conventional lightweight body filler. The body filler has of course been applied to the repair area as needed, and then uh, afterwards blocked, and we can see the completed repair here. Notice how the repair material does not go onto the paint, but if you remember earlier, there's that polyethylene film that's on top of this SMC. We can go right up to the polyethylene film with the body filler. If uh, you're using fiberglass as your base material, it may have come with a coating on it known as gel coat, we'll talk about later. And you can go right up to or on top of the gel coat with your body filler as needed. After the repair, of course, we need to prep it, prime it, reprep it, paint it. I'm not gonna talk about paint, 
but I will talk about primer since it's an essential step to protecting the repair. We want to make sure that we put something on top of the fiberglass that will protect the fiberglass and any of the other materials we've used. And epoxy is an excellent choice because it will stick to anything we've used in the repair process and protect all of that from humidity, moisture, and of course other contaminants. On top of the epoxy primer, you'd want to apply a conventional surfacer. Make sure you use your surfacer as for the technical data sheet for the product. An alternative would be to use a polyester primer surfacer, which is like this product seen here. And those can be used, of course, to go on top of the product, sand them, and give you a nice cosmetic appearance. Always refer to the TDS sheets for the products you're using. The products I just mentioned can be applied to either SMC or fiberglass as per the technical data sheets for the specific products. If you're working with fiberglass and not SMC, you have the option of applying a gel coat instead. Gel coat is a product that's both uh, like a paint and a primer in one that can go on top of fiberglass. It will come in one of two type of resin technologies. It will come either in what we see here, which is polyester based using the methyl ethyl ketone peroxide hardener, or it will come in an epoxy based resin. Both are great products and are very thick. Because they're thick, they allow for a lot of mill build, but also require special equipment for spraying properly and often require polishing afterwards. And they will give a similar appearance to paint once completed and are very durable. You may be able to paint over top of gel coat in some circumstances, making sure, of course, to follow the technical data sheets for the product that you're using. And of course, mix the product as necessary. On the back of this can here, we can see the mixing ratio for this particular product using that liquid hardener. And we are literally back on the back side of the panel. And that is because we didn't complete the repair yet. We still have to reinstall the piece we cut out. Uh, and at this point, we've ground everything around the repair area as needed to accept our adhesive repair material. You'll notice at the very top of the panel, we've installed an insert that will be used to help lap the new panel over top of the old. Ideally, your insert should uh, go everywhere over the butt joint. That will make for a strong patch. We only did one section simply for the purpose of demonstration. The uh, original joint will be reattached as it was, uh, just lapped on top of the old panel. So we're using a two component repair material. Uh, in this case, it's epoxy based and that's very typical. Uh, you may have a urethane or other resin, but in most cases when we're dealing with FRP, fiber reinforced plastics that are thermoset, you'll be using an epoxy based resin. And what we've done is applied a primer coat to all of the areas we've ground. And that makes sure, of course, that all of the fibers and exposed resin is fully covered, which helps seal it and protect it, and gives us that good uh, primer ground coat for our adhesive. We then go and squeeze a good bead of adhesive over the entire area and do this both on the original panel and the piece that's going in. And then we'll set the piece in here as so. You can see all the adhesive on there. Of course, I wouldn't normally butt these. Uh, we would do that insert like we see in the center of the panel, but of course this is just a demonstration only, but make sure you have something behind it. The original joint should always have the adhesive, but the areas that we've bought it, you could of course use resin instead for attaching those. Speaking of resin, watch me pour this fiberglass resin into the graduated cylinder. I'm doing that to measure out a specific amount of resin so that I can add hardener. Now the hardener for this is hopefully what you remember by now, the methyl ethyl ketone peroxide, the liquid hardener. And I count how many drops go in there. That is based on the information that was provided with this resin. If I were to mix a larger quantity, I could measure out the resin and then just add the entire tube of hardener, which makes it very easy to measure. Once I've added the hardener, immediately stir it very thoroughly right away. Make sure that it is mixed thoroughly, especially since it's liquid hardener, I cannot see if it's mixed in. So make sure you spend your time mixing very, very, very well. Now, what am I going to do? We've already done the repair. So what I'm going to do at this point is show you not only how to mix the fiberglass resin, which is almost the same as the SMC, except the hardener, of course, and the ratio, but I'm going to show you how to make a patch. If you have either SMC or fiberglass and the part comes in missing a section, so let's say there's a hole or chunk missing, you could actually replace that part easily by making the piece off of the panel. So taking the aluminum here, I've folded it into a mold. Let's say it's the curve of that hood or something. And to help make sure that the resin release is easy, I have applied some waxed paper. Waxed paper is another uh, great thing you can use with resin that it will not stick to. So in addition to aluminum or aluminum tape, 
uh, we can easily use some waxed paper. I'm applying resin to the waxed paper thoroughly. And then in this case, I'm applying a layer of cloth, not mesh uh, in this case, which would be the mat, the cloth itself. And then applying a bunch of resin to the cloth. Now, in this case, you could apply multiple layers. So I'm just doing one layer for the sake of demo, but you'd probably want to do two, three, four layers as needed to build up some thickness and some strength. Once I get enough resin on there, I will let this sit and cure. And this is very similar to the SMC resin with the amount of time it takes to cure and how it cures. Make sure that you apply enough resin to the edges, of course, and that your patch is large enough uh, and, in fact, bigger than the area that you're trying to replace. Once it cures, we'll pop it out of this mold, and then we will uh, go and grind this, grind the piece that we're trying to repair, and then using resin or the adhesive we used earlier, reattach it and then finish as necessary. It's a great process when doing fiberglass or SMC repairs, especially on larger pieces where there are parts missing. I set the piece up on an angle so the resin could flow to the bottom instead of pooling. And once it's cured and it's hard, it just pops right out of that mold quite nicely. And that's what we're looking for. And then of course, as mentioned, we can grind as necessary and then reattach uh, to the panel either from the inside or the outside. So it could match, say, the curve of a hood or something. Again, this was just a demo. And you know what? This is the longest video I've made to date and we are at the end. Thanks for watching.